right now UCSD just to let you know with what they have, they are almost net zero. Net zero means they are independent. They generate all they need. And I don't know how much money they save you and how much you see in UCSD. They don't pay any more electricity bills, you know. They are connected to the UCG, uh, FTGA degree, but almost their net exchange is almost zero. Yeah, I mean, they don't need SDGA. But it's good to have SDGA and backup if something happens here. You can take that one and thing. But they are, they are kind of independent. They can support themselves. Uh, self excitation, you know? Oh, sorry. Uh, separately excited machine. This is what we put together for the. talked about the generator, IE was going that way, and this is the back EMF, and here it's connected to the shaft and it's located. So this is for generator system. This is the loop, what we go to last week I talked about. It. Okay, there are two equations. One is the voltage equation for the armature circuit. We can write the equation here. We say PA is equal to writing KDL here. It's going to be VP plus RA, IA plus 2VB plus LA, DIA over VP. And we said under the SPD state condition, this one is going to be zero, right? Is, uh, because we don't have any change in the current. So basically, e, EA is going to be equal to VP plus uh, RA, IA plus 2VB. Or we can say VP is equal to EA minus RA, IA minus 2VB. Most of the time, I say because I assume this one is almost zero. So the brush voltage we assume is zero. That was one equation for the armature circuit, and we have one equation also for here. That's very simple again. Vf is equal to Rf plus Rfx, If plus Ldif over dc. Again, under the steady state condition, this one is zero, right? So basically, If is going to be Vf over Rf plus Rfx. Now, we said when we have this machine rotating at omega m, remember we said we can two ways we can control the voltage. One way was to change the clock, right? We said usually we don't do that, but if you want to do that, you can change the Rx here, right? You can change the If. If you are not in saturated, saturated area, we can change the flux. And flux is going to change the induced voltage, right? So that's one way to control the voltage. The other way to control the voltage, you say you can change the speed here, right? E is equal to this EA is equal to KA flux omega m, right? KA is going to either you can change the speed here or you can change the flux. How to change the flux? If you are not in the saturated area, if you are in saturated area, there is no way you can change include the flux anymore. But if you are in the linear area, so basically, if we change IF, we can control P, right? To change IF, we can change Rx, right? But in new, in the modern, sy modern system, they don't put Rfx, Rf anymore here. They change the voltage. This is what you are learning in power trans, right? You have, you have seen the, uh, I'm not did you get to the tire store one or not yet, you know? Not yet. Just started, yeah. So basically, you could generate a simple variable voltage source to the power front at a very low cost. The advantage of buying this one compared to this one, can you tell what? Power dissipation. Because when you have an extra resistance here, it's going to cause more power dissipation, right? 
but if you reduce your voltage source, no. The efficiency is going to stay much better than when you have a series resistance in the center. And this thing is happening all the time. When they didn't have this kind of thing, they have to change the, when they put a real start to change the RF to control the field. But nowadays, you know, they use a power supply. It's simple, it's only a simple variable power supply. You can change the VDC by changing the knob, you know, and you keep your circuit, you know. You can control the RF. Now, let's look at here. Let's assume the speed is constant. Let's say the speed is constant and flux also is constant. We are not changing it, right? I'm going to plot the dt versus ia. This is a very important characteristic. The no load characteristic I plotted. What was the node? No load was what? EA versus what? I am using is like something like this, right? And with a different speed, it's going to be like this. Right? This, is, this one was a no load characteristic. There was no armature current, right? Now here, look, they, they call it um, a load characteristic. Now I explain that it's working as a generator. So when you have a generator, let's look at it. Why are we looking at this trick? When you have a generator, when you have a voltage source, what is important for you guys? I'm giving you a generator, and you are as an engineer, you're going to judge that one. Let's say this is a good generator or not. Either DC or AC, doesn't matter. What are you going to check? Power factor. Let's say DC, which is the new power factor. Raise load of voltage. Raise huh? output. Raise power. Voltage regulation. Voltage regulation. That, that's the important. For a generator, voltage regulation is very important. How good is the voltage? You know, when you increase the load, how much voltage drop you are going to get, right? That's the, the idea, if you have an ideal source, we talked about the power system, whatever load you have, the voltage is not going to change. It's going to stay the same, right? But when you have a, when you have a real source, when you, you take more current, look at the battery, car battery, right? Car battery model is like this, right? If you put the voltmeter here, no load, how much you are going to see here? Let's say this is 12 volts. How much are you going to see here? 12. But as soon as you close this one and put some rows here, this voltage is going to drop, right? Because this is not ideal. There is some series of pins here, right? It's going to drop. This is not ideal. If you look at it, it's going to be like this. So for example, this is a V bat, no load. So this is a V. The voltage you're going to measure here is going to have all in the delta V. And this is the current. And this is the, let's call this one, right? The voltage ideally is 12 volts, right? All the way, right? But when you take more current, the more the more voltage drop, right? Now they call this one load characteristic of the source or generator. Here the same thing. Look at it. If I let's forget the two VD for now. If I have more current, let's say let's say flux is constant and uh, omega m is constant. What does it mean? E is constant, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, if there is no load, if I, IA is zero, how much is this one? It's EA, right? Forget it's 2V, there are some, or EA minus 2V, right? Actually, not minus 2V, because 2V also depends on the current, right? There is some brush in there. If there is no load, this one and this one for sure, they are how much? Zero. And VT is equal to EA, right? Now, this is what we wish to have. If I could have a generator like this, doesn't matter how much load I'm taking, right? This is what I would like to have. I wish, let's say it would like to have right word. I wish I could have something like that because it's not possible to have it. This is the ideal generator, right? Right, this is the ideal generator. What is gonna happen in reality? How much, what is, it, what is that? This voltage is going to start to drop. How much is this delta V? Seven. How much is this delta V? Right? It's up to somewhere is linear, but it's going to bend. I'm not going to get to the bend. The bend is because of the armature reaction. Armature reaction, I'm going to talk about it later, or later what it is. 
But you know, for you guys to know, this voltage is going to start to drop. The more current you are, you are taking out of the generator, the more drop you are going to see in the terminal voltage, terminal voltage of the generator. This characteristic is very important for the generator. For the motor, it's not. But for the generator, it's important because the generator is going to give us the output voltage. This is important for us, right? Now, whenever you want to characterize something, you know, you go characterize those things which are important for you. For example, I don't know, if you're going to give another example, you know, I mean, I mean, say why this one is important for generator, because this is, we are looking at the generator, this is in generator we are looking for, right? Not torque, not those kind of things. We are looking for a flat voltage profile, and efficiency. These are the things we would like to have a good number for that. Very low delta V, very low voltage regulation, and very high efficiency. This is what we look for as a generator. Now, let's look at the model characteristics. So what is important for a model? That's an important parameter for a motor. Let's look at the motor, the torque characteristic, characteristic for a motor. If again we have it cell, uh, in a separately excited, let's say we have the same circuit, I'm going to just put it like this from now on. Uh, one, one resistor here, let's call it RF, and this is a DF, LF, and our mixture here again. But in this case, the current is going to go inside, right? This is the motor. If you look at it here, omega m, this, this one was generated. Omega m here, Tn is the same direction with the omega m, right? And T electrical is going to be the other one, right? But this one is the motor. If this machine is rotating this way, omega m, so T electrical is going to be in the same direction, and T mechanical or T load is going to be opposite direction, right? In the motor, the electrical torque is going to rotate the machine. In the generator, electrical torque is against the rotation, right? Now we have this motor. Let's see what's the equation for this. So, Again, this part is fixed, you know, again, say Vf is equal to Lf Dif over Dt. Plus Rfif. As I said, I'm thinking, you know, maybe we, we, we offer a course in the motor control maybe next year, something like that. We'll talk to the department if they want to do that. Another question is here. If we, we, when we are in the motor control, this is very important. You cannot ignore it, you know. When we are over there again, so a steady state that we right here. So Vt is going to be RAIA plus LDIA over Vt plus E. I, I ignore the V brushes. You know, if there is V brushes, you should add the V brushes. Let's, let's put it there for now. Plus two V brushes. In the steady state, Basically, this one is gone, this one is gone, and let's assume, this is not a steady state, but let's assume this one is almost zero. Not because of a steady state. This is doesn't have, doesn't have anything to do with a steady state, right? I assume the V brushes are zero. Now, so Vf is going to be RFIF, and Vt is going to be RAIA, plus here. Now, I want to get to the torque characteristic of this machine from this equation. If this is the rotor, uh, let, me, let, me, let me use this equation now. Ea is equal to Ka plus omega m. Right? That's this thing. Right? <laughs> If this is the rotor of the machine, right, and this is the omega m, and this is a T electrical, and this is a T load, we know uh, T 
Te minus Tm is J d omega m over dt, right? This is a Newton equation, right? So a steady state, how much is this one? Zero, because d omega m over dt is going to be zero. Motor is working at a steady state, right? So basically, let's take T from Ti, because it's the motor Ti. So basically, Te is equal to Ti, right? This is what we have. How much is the Te? K plus I A, right? T is the K plus I A. So let's, let's, let's find out how much is the I A. If I use these two equations, K plus I A is going to be equal to T L. So basically, I A is going to be T L over K plus, right? K plus. So I know the IA, I know the EA from uh, equation number one. This is the equation number one. This is the equation number two. I know EA, IA, I'm going to replace them in this equation. From one and two. What are T and T is electrical force. And this one is the same direction with the uh, omega m. TL is a load. You know, for example, you have a you have electric car is the tires of the machine. They are, they are putting some uh, negative torque on the on the shaft, right? So <coughs> let's replace from one and two for uh, I A and E A and see where we are going to go. So V T is going to be equal to R A T L over K P plus K flux over M. I'm going to go find omega m from this equation. It is going to be Vt over k plus minus uh, Ra over k plus to the power of 2. Right? How I can control this thing. So that's one thing. If I change this one, I can change this one. Anything else? Good. So change this one. Right. Anything else? Ra basically you have to put another another real stuff here, right? Because Ra you cannot change. That's the that's the resistance of the armature winding, right? You add an extra resistor here, so basically we can change this back. Because this basically this one plus this one is going to be equivalent to Ra, right? So you can change it. So you say three ways. Voltage, flux, Ra. So we, we call this one armature control, flux control, and the voltage control. So which one is the best? Voltage control. Why the armature control is not good? See, I have to add another resistor here, right? So then we RI squared here, right? It's adding more lock to the system, right? I don't want that. I don't want to reduce my efficiency, right? That's it. Why the flux control is not good? No, that one is going to be another source here, right? You can change it somehow. The same thing as over there. So basically, here also is going to be another source here, right? This source here. This source here. Huh? Voltage control. Voltage control. Voltage control. Voltage control. You are right, but you are not saying it completely, you know? You are not doing it, right? You are not doing it, right? Here, if you go 10% up, this one goes 10% up. If you go 10% down, this one goes 10% down. This is the number of right? But this is the KT and